Welcome to Animated Biology. This time we are taking a detailed look at glycolysis. Last time we took a look at just the two general phases of glycolysis and its main reactants and main products. So just a quick review of that. We saw that glucose was split into two pyruvate molecules in the process two ATP were burned and we produced four ATP for a net of two ATP and then two NAD molecules were reduced into NADH molecules. We glazed over each of the steps. Uh, we said that there were 10 specific reactions that were taking place and 10 specific enzymes that were catalyzing each reaction. So this time we're gonna go through each one of those and so this is an intermediate video um, so if you're in a biochemistry class or an upper level undergraduate um, physiology course or biology course and you're going through the steps of glycolysis you may need to know these steps in detail. So let's get into it. In our first reaction we're going to need glucose and ATP as our reactants. The enzyme hexokinase is going to catalyze the phosphorylation of glucose and that will produce glucose 6 phosphate. And so every time we have a kinase, kinases are going to add phosphates to molecules. So hexokinase adds a phosphate to our 6 carbon sugar here to produce our glucose 6 phosphate. In the second step, our glucose 6-phosphate is going to go through an isomerization reaction and that's going to be catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglucoisomerase to produce fructose 6-phosphate. And so remember an isomer is a molecule that's got the same chemical formula but a different structure and so fructose 6-phosphate is an isomer of glucose 6-phosphate. In the third reaction, we're going to use another ATP molecule to phosphorylize our fructose 6-phosphate. And the enzyme that's going to catalyze that is phosphofructokinase, or also known as PFK. And that is going to produce fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate is then cleaved by an elimination reaction catalyzed by a lyase specifically called fructose bisphosphate aldolase in which an aldolase is catalyzing the aldol reaction which is a specific elimination reaction to create or split an aldol in this case is the fructose molecule. This cleavage of the molecule creates dihydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. DHAP is going to go through an isomerization reaction using triose phosphate isomerase as the enzyme, and that's going to give us another G3P molecule. So this is our middle step that gives us two G3P molecules because DHAP is an isomer of G3P. Moving into the energy releasing phase, the two G3P molecules are then going to be oxidized and this oxidation reduction reaction is going to reduce NAD. Glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase is going to reduce the NAD molecule into NADH and at the same time we're going to have a phosphate, an inorganic phosphate from the cytosol that's going to attach to the G3P molecule. So we've got two things occurring here at once. We have the uh, oxidation redox reaction that's occurring uh, from the G3P to the NADH molecule and we have our phosphorylation taking place um, by the enzyme. So the enzyme is really named because it is removing a hydrogen from the G3P molecule and it is using the hydrogen's electron to reduce our NADH. 
So this is kind of a trick on redox reactions. If you follow the hydrogens, usually uh, something that gains a hydrogen is also gaining electrons, which means it is being reduced. So oxidized is lost, reduced is gain, oil rig. So our NADH molecule gained electrons, therefore it has been reduced. Let's back up for a second and let's take a look at our second electron on the hydrogen that came from the phosphate. This electron is going to join in the resonance of the bond from this upper carbon here and it's going to push out uh, an electron from this bond and this electron then bounces to our bond between our carbons on the left and pushes out another electron and finally the electron is going to end up next to our nitrogen here because this nitrogen it is positively charged it's not shown here but we'll look at this on a, uh, a two-dimensional structure we can see that the NAD uh, the nitrogen on the NAD is positively charged and the nitrogen on the NADH is no longer positively charged and the resonance around has been changed to where we just have double bonds on both sides of our carbon ring. It's due to this electron pushing around these other electrons. This also shows you the extra hydrogen which is not being pushed on to the NAD molecule and it's going to be released out into the cytosol. And at the result of this, our G3P molecule is now 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So we got two phosphate groups on each of the molecules here for a total of four phosphates. These are the four phosphates that are going to end up as our ATP. So now we can produce our ATP using substrate level phosphorylation because these are substrates and we're phosphorylizing molecules with the substrates uh, compared to oxidative phosphorylation. Uh, so now the substrate, which is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, is going to attach to its enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase which is going to phosphorylize the ADP molecule into ATP. So this produces two ATP for both of our reactions occurring at the same time here. Before removing our last phosphate, we first have to go through a couple of isomeration reaction. So the first one, uh, we have here is the isomeration of the our three phosphoglycerate into two phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase and our next isomerization reaction is taking our two phosphoglycerate and we're going to isomerize that into phosphenolpyruvate using the enzyme enolase. So finally after all of these reactions uh, we have gone down to phosphenyl pyruvate also known as PEP and finally our PEP molecule is going to be used to phosphorylize our last two ADP molecules using the enzyme pyruvate kinase and our final molecule that we are left with is two pyruvate molecules. All right, guys, so that does it for our intermediate video of glycolysis. Uh, be on the lookout for the Krebs cycle beginner and Krebs cycle intermediate, which is our second phase of aerobic respiration. And finally, we'll finish off with the electron transport chain. Thanks, guys.